Okay, today we're talking about angles and a different way to measure angles. Um, this particular picture, I want you to remember, it asks what is the measure of the angle formed by the slice of pi. So we have a pi here, we have an angle, and in this particular case, remember the radius of a circle goes from the center of the circle all the way to the actual circle itself. So my radius is 5 inches and the piece of pie that has been cut out, this part of the pie, as you can see by our picture, is also 5 inches. That's going to be important. We're going to talk about it in just a second. But before we do, let's go review our vocabulary. We have a central angle of a circle is one whose vertex is at the center of the circle. We also have an intercepted arc. And the intercepted arc of the circle is that portion of the circle with the endpoints on the sides of the central angle. So here is my central angle formed with our red arrow. So we're going to label that as our central angle and then the intercepted arc is basically that part of the circle that's been cut off by that angle. So this is our intercepted arc. Now, that new unit of measure that I was just showing you with the pi is what we call a radian. It is a different unit of measure for angles, just like we have a different unit of measure for length. We can use feet, we can use inches, we can use meters or centimeters. A radian, and that's what this is demonstrating right here, is a radian, is the measure of a central angle that intercepts an arc with the length equal to the radius of the arc. So whenever the radius is the same as the arc that intercepts, then we actually have a radian. Now hopefully you can see how many of these does it take to go around our circle? Well, it actually takes 2 pi radians. Therefore, 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees or 1 pi is equal to 180 degrees. So, to convert back and forth, we have a conversion factor and the important thing that you need to remember is when you convert two radians you want the radians to go on top which means you want degrees on the bottom so our conversion factor will be pi over 180 degrees if we're going to go two degrees then we're going to make sure we want degrees on top so our conversion factor would be 180 degrees over pi Let's do a few examples. What is the degree measure of each angle expressed in radians? And what is the radian measure of each angle expressed in degrees? So if they gave it to me in radians, they want me to go to degrees. So if I'm going 2 degrees, I want degrees on top, radians on the bottom. Hopefully you remember from our fractions that if we have uh, the same factor on the top and the bottom, we can cancel. 180 divided by 2 is 90 degrees. So pi over 2 radians is the same as 90 degrees. Now they gave us 225 degrees and we want to go 2 radians. That means I want to get rid of my degrees. So my degrees has to be on the bottom and pi will be on top. So we're looking for a number that goes into both 225 over 180 most calculators will do it for you. I believe 45 degrees goes into both. And so we get a final answer of 5 pi over 4. Now, some books will put a little r up there to signify radians. Some actually write out the whole word. Uh, it is acceptable for you to not write anything. So keep in mind, if it's degrees, you have to put a degree symbol. If it's radians, you can put the R or you don't have to put anything at all. 
So we're going from radians to degrees. Notice, don't get tricked up here. There's no pi. That's okay. Um, I have two radians. But I'm going two degrees, so I need 180 over pi because these are both radians. So you're going to take out your calculator and do 2 times 180 divided by pi. And you should get a number 114.59 around that to 6. We're going degrees. i got to have a degree symbol with my answer. Okay. Last, we got 150 degrees. So I'm going to do 150 degrees times I need to get rid of my degrees, so my 180 is going to go on the bottom, and pi is going to go on top. And 15 over 18 simplifies to 5 pi over 6. And that's our radian measure. Now, we can go through and calculate each of these, but we're actually going to go back to our unit circle now and fill in what we started yesterday, or the last class meeting, we're going to put radian measures on our unit circle. Okay, so let's start off with what we know. I'm going to, we have um, our 30 degrees in red, 45 is in purple, 60 is in green, and we put our axes in blue. So I'm going to start off with our axes and just put it on the other side. Zero degrees is the same as zero radians. Okay, uh, 360 degrees we just talked about is the same as 2 pi radians. Okay, now think about that pi. We have a whole circle, and if I go halfway around, then I'm going to be half of 2 pi, and half of 2 pi is pi. And what if I go halfway between 0 and pi? That's where I get pi over 2. And this, of course, down here is going to be 3 pi over 2, because that's one and a half times. Okay? Now, uh, the next thing to think about, we're going to go to our red. So pick up your red pen as you fill in your circle. This is 30 degrees. And if I take this, this actually happens to be, if you notice, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, and 180. Those are all multiples of 30. So how many slices of pi did I divide this pi into, this half of my circle? I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cuts, which actually means that I have 6 pieces of pi, which is where we're getting pi over 6. You can remember it that way. You can do the conversion factor. Um, however, now, pi over 6 is my radian measure for 30 degrees. When I go over here, these answers will always be one less than my denominator. So if I started with pi over 6, 1 less than 6 is 5, so it will be 5 pi over 6. Down here, again, my pi over 6, and it's going to be 1 more than pi. And when you come on this side, still have my pi over 6, but this time it's going to be one less than twice my denominator. So 2 times 6 is 12, minus 1 is 11. And we'll do the same thing with our 45 degree angle. Hopefully you can see that that is half of a half, so that makes it a fourth of the pi, pi over 4. Okay, coming back over here, I got my pi over 4 family. One less than the denominator makes it 3 pi over 4. One more than the denominator makes this one 5 pi over 4. And one less than twice the denominator makes this one 7 pi over 4. Okay? And last but not least, we got our 60 degree angle. Okay? And we actually have two cuts for it, which means we divided it into three pieces, pi over 3. Again, my pi over 3 family, but it's 1 less than the denominator. Here, it's 1 more than the denominator, so I'm going to have 4 pi over 3. And over here, my pi over 3 is going to be 1 less than 
twice, that makes it 5 pi over 3. So now we have all of our radian measures on our circle. And we can refer back to it when we go and calculate the values like we're oops, fixing to do in the next page. What are the exact values of the cosine of 7 pi over 6? So we're going to go find 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6, what's my cosine? Remember, cosine is the first one. So my answer is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. So we'll go answer. Cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative square root of 3 over 2. And the sine, go back and look. The sine, of course, is negative 1 half. So we fill in negative 1 half. So we got to be familiar with those and we'll practice as we go along. Now, the next last thing we got to talk about for a circle of a radius r and a central angle measure of theta radians, the length s of the intercepted arc is given by the formula s equals r theta. The most important thing to remember, and they tell it to you up there, is theta has to be in radians. Okay? It's not accurate if you do this in degrees. Okay, so using the circle at the right, what is the length of B to the nearest tenth? So we're looking for this blue section. We're looking for the length of that arc. So if we use our formula S equals R theta, then I have R. R stands for my radius, which is 3 inches, and theta is 2 pi over 3. So I put in 2 pi over 3. Of course my 3's cancel leaving me with 2 pi. And they asked us to take it to the nearest tenth. So 2 pi, punch it in your calculator, you will find out that that is 6.3 inches. And to make our lesson even more complete we have a lovely word problem. A weather satellite, excuse me, a weather satellite is in a circular orbit 3,600 kilometers above the Earth's surface and completes one orbit every four hours. How far does it travel in one hour? So, first off, you need to think about theta. And theta is, if it travels one orbit in four hours, how far does it go in one hour? Well, hopefully y'all can see that that's going to be one-fourth of two pi, which means that the angle that it's traveling is only pi over four radians. Oh, excuse me, not pi over four. It is pi over two radians. Okay, now, so we take that, we're going to use our formula that we just had, S equals R theta. Now, what is my radius? Well, we go from the center of the Earth to the outside is 6,400 kilometers. They just told me it was going 3,600 kilometers above the Earth. So that means I'm going to add those two together. 3,600, 6,400 gives me a radius of 10,000. And my theta is pi over 2. We punch that in our calculator and we get an answer of 1,5. 707.96. I'm going to round that to the nearest hole. So we'll make it 15,708 kilometers. I always need a label when I'm answering those word problems. So hopefully you can see what the radians do. It is another unit of measure, but it is uh, helps to keep the numbers smaller. It's used a lot in higher math classes and a lot of applied math. And the difficulty of the problems that come keep our numbers smaller in our workings. So that sums up radian measure.